There are many things that hold men back from getting and having their financial house in order. Some men have vices like drinking, drugs, sex, and so forth. Some men spend too much money on useless indulgences like video games, spicy movies, or food. But there is one thing above all that keeps men from financial solvency, and that is paying for children they do not have full custody of, which is a fancy way of saying baby mama. Baby mamas are the scourge of the earth. They bring nothing but drama to a man's life. They are the single biggest obstacle to achieving financial solvency for many reasons. Now, there are generally two kinds of baby mamas. The first kind is the baby mama bone collector. The baby mama bone collector is the girl who gets smashed by a lot of dudes when they're young, fertile, and horny. They aren't very discriminate about who they let hit it raw and end up with three kids by three different dudes by the time they're 22. And don't get it twisted, guys. Black girls aren't the only sausage-smoking baby mamas out there. You got white girls, Latinas, Asians, all these girls are out here getting ran through. So if you think getting with a young white girl means she doesn't have kids, think again. White girls get far more opportunities than any other race of female out there. More opportunities plus lack of impulse control equals more kids. I remember a long time ago in my 20s, I needed some extra money. So I decided to go to one of these early morning work today, get pay today outfits. I did this a lot in my early 20s and it always came in handy. Anyway, I remember seeing this young white girl who was pregnant waiting with the rest of us. And I asked her, what are you doing here? And she said, I've got three kids. And I was like, God damn. Now, I didn't know if it was three kids, including the one in her belly. But either way, that chick was a baby machine. Anyway, the second kind of baby mama is the trap you with a kid baby mama. This is the woman who's a little older, probably doesn't have kids probably never married, and she's in her early to mid-30s. Now, we know that there are a lot of chicks out here running around whose biological clocks are ticking louder and louder by the day. And when it becomes apparent to these females that they don't have much time left to get pregnant and have a kid, they start to panic for two main reasons. Number one, older females who give birth are more likely to have unhealthy children, which is why women should marry young and have kids young in the first place. And number two, they know that men of value don't want to have children with old, used, washed-up women for exactly the same reason as number one. Well, you might be with a girl right now who has the baby rabies, and you don't even know it. And I'm going to give you six signs she's trying to trap you with a kid. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with any man who might have a girlfriend with the baby rabies. I would also like to remind you that enrollment for my signature course, Womanies Volume 3, opens in less than 24 hours. That's tomorrow, guys. Womanies Volume 3 is a revolutionary series that is unlike anyone has ever seen or heard. No, I'm not exaggerating. You can search the internet far and wide, and there isn't a single video, seminar, course, or book that gives you the raw and unfiltered truth about what women really mean when they communicate with men within the context of sexual interaction. Here's a sample of what you can expect in Womanese Volume 3. You're disrespecting me. You're not treating me like a princess. You're being verbally abusive. You're not agreeing with everything I say. You're insecure, controlling, and possessive. I need you to give me space so I can cheat on you? Maybe. No. We'll see. Nope. More than likely. Uh-uh. If I don't have plans, definitely. Definitely not. If nothing comes up, sure. Sure won't. Um, if I can finish my project, of course. Of course not. When it comes to meeting up with girls, a general rule of thumb is that if the answer is anything but yes, the answer is always no. Listen, if a girl wants to meet up with you, she'll meet up with you. She won't put conditions on it. She won't tell you about other plans. She'll simply say yes and wait for your instructions. I want to take this slow. I want to keep my ex while you buy me things. Women never take things slow with the men they want. They say this to make them think there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, so that man will stick around and do her favors, thinking she'll reward him for his efforts. Newsflash, she'll never fuck that guy. So if a woman ever says this to you, understand that you will never ever fuck her. Save yourself some time and bounce like a bad check. We need to take a break. I've been another guy behind your back. We should start seeing other people. I'm cheating on you. Let's try an open relationship. I'm having sex with another guy. A woman will never just tell you they're f***ing someone else. So to circumvent having to be honest and having a difficult conversation, which, by the way, means admitting she's cheating, she'll use any combination of these statements to avoid looking like a cheating If she says any of these things to you, she's been f***ing another dude for at least six months and now knows she can start a relationship with him. Count on it. I need to find myself. I need to find the password to my Tinder account. I have to follow my heart. I have to follow my impulse to sleep around. I need to take care of me for a change. I'm gonna f a lot of guys in a short period of time. Again, a woman will never just straight up tell you that she's gonna start f anything with a white chromosome and a pulse. Remember, she does not want to look like a f So she uses these phrases to characterize behaviors as some sort of soul-searching journey that'll make her a better person. I got news for you. The only thing she'll be better at at the end of this journey is sucking. 
I want a guy who makes me laugh. I want a guy who's hot. I want a kind, sensitive guy who loves me for me. I want a kind, sensitive guy who's hot. He's my soulmate. He is so hot. Now this isn't to say that women don't actually want these traits in a man, because a lot of times they do. But we're talking about and some aren't interested in personality or sensitivity. They want a stable of hot guys who pound them out and leave them in a sweaty heap. They'll look for all that other stuff when the hot guys no longer want anything to do with them. He's my soulmate means he's hot and he be good. That's all there is to it. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, gentlemen. This course is jam-packed with over 400 translations of the most common words, phrases, and statements that women make when they try to hide their nefarious intentions and any red flags they have. Having this knowledge will not only help you sidestep these kinds of women who will destroy your life, it will also drastically improve your dating life. You'll be better with attractive women than you've ever been before. Plus, Volume 3 is absolutely loaded with over 200 hours of incredible bonus content you can't find on any platform anywhere. First, there's the Masculine Excellence Lifestyle Kit. This kit contains over 50 hours of video and audio content from the legends of this community. Rolo Tomasi, whose books have changed and saved more lives than anyone. Alan Roger Curry, who is a world-renowned dating coach of over three decades standing, and Illimitable Man, who displays sheer brilliance in dissecting and breaking down women to the micro-nuance and navigating today's dating market. The kit also contains the A to Z Fitness Guide, which features every episode I've done with nutrition and fitness expert Myron Gaines. The second bonus is the video and audio versions of the entire first season of One on One with Donovan Sharp. You can watch or listen to my in-studio interviews with guys like Kevin Samuels, Minister Jap, Aaron Clary, Hotep Jesus, Coach Greg Adams, and many more. And we discuss everything from women to finances to entrepreneurship or anything that pertains to improving your life as a man. Bonus number three is also the entire first season of the most watched roundtable podcast in this community, The Seven. Over the course of 15 episodes, the panelists discuss important topics that are important to men who want to improve their lives both in and outside of dating, such as how to handle tens, the importance of building high value, which women to pursue and which women to steer clear of, and much more. You can watch the videos at your convenience or listen to the audio on the go. Plus, you get the Fit Test Guide, which will make you unflappable in the face of a woman testing your masculinity. Bonus number five, the Gold Diggers Guide, which will help you steer clear of women looking to take advantage of you financially. What's more is that all Womanese Volume 3 enrollees get access to all of the past volumes, which are Womanese 101 and Womanese Volume 2. Well, you will also get access to Womanese Volume 4, which will contain an additional 100 translations, plus all subsequent volumes at no extra charge. And I plan on releasing at least two more volumes after this one. Guys, I'm still not done. When you enroll in Womanese Volume 3, you will get lifetime access to my Sunday webinars where I do coaching, consultations, and give personalized advice. Believe it or not, guys, I have one last bonus, and it is a big deal. So listen up. The first 100 men who enroll in Womanese Volume 3 will get the audio version of my 25-hour game course, How to Master the Game. I didn't stutter, guys. The first 100 men to enroll will get to learn how to destroy approach anxiety, first date logistics, text game, how to avoid blue pill backsliding, how to get a girl to give you her back door, Tinder game, strip club game. Guys, that's just 7% of the 25 hours of ice cold game that will take your dating life to the next dimension. Gentlemen, this course and all of these bonuses gives you everything you need to finally start living a life of true dominance and a life on your own terms. Space is limited and the enrollment window is extremely narrow. And because volumes four, five, and six will contain a lot more information and bonuses, the enrollment will go up. So it is absolutely paramount that you get on the waiting list now before it's too late. To be notified the moment enrollment opens, text GIRLS to 313313 or go to donovansharp.com slash womanese3. Fit Test Compendium students, I haven't forgotten about you either. I'll be sending all of you your $300 coupons when enrollment opens on Friday. And those of you who purchased How to Master the Game video version at 50% off over the weekend will get your $250 coupons as well. Gentlemen, do not put off this incredible opportunity to completely change your life. You owe it to yourself not to ignore yet another chance to alter the very trajectory of your life. Okay, let's get right to it. Six signs your girl has baby rabies. Number one, she proactively mentions a miscarriage. There aren't too many situations where a woman would proactively mention a miscarriage, especially to a guy she's sleeping with. Most of the time when they mention it without being asked about it, it's because they're looking for attention and sympathy. Sometimes they'll mention it at a doctor's office if they're asked because of a medical exam, but that's just because they're asked to talk about it. 
Are you pregnant? Have you ever been pregnant? Etc. If a woman you're seeing starts to talk about a miscarriage she had and it comes out of the blue, meaning you weren't even talking about kids or anything like that, she is hinting to you that she's looking to have a kid and it might mean she wants you to be the father. Miscarriages are a mind job to women because they take it personally. They think to themselves, a baby died inside of me. Something must be wrong with me. And no matter what women say, they have a strong biological desire to reproduce. And if they lost an opportunity because of a miscarriage, carrying a pregnancy to term in her mind will help her get over it and repair her reproductive self-image. Number two, she's had a noitroba spelled backwards, which is the early termination of a sutev spelled backwards. Now, it's one thing to have a miscarriage because that's not something a female has control over. Sometimes a woman's body just rejects a pregnancy for any number of reasons or no reason at all. That's just how it is. But when a woman chooses to end her baby before it's born, that's not only a mind job, she will have an extremely guilty conscience. No matter what women say or think, every single noit roba stays with them. Life goes on and they continue to live their lives and party and smash without condoms and all the rest of that. But every once in a while they think to themselves, I wonder what my kid would have looked like right now. I wonder if it was a boy or a girl. I wonder what I would have named it. These are the kinds of thoughts that go through every woman's mind who has done this to herself. Well, at some point, that guilty conscience is too much to handle, and they feel that in order to make up for a noit roba, or to right a wrong or wrongs, they need to have a baby to redeem themselves. Number three, she's in her 30s, and she asks if you like kids. Now, most men might think that this is a standard question that comes from females, especially in the beginning, like the first date or the beginning of a relationship. But if she is over the age of 30, and she asks you if you like kids, watch out. Keep in mind that younger women ask this question too, but their reasons are a little different. They might be thinking about you as long-term relationship material. Now, that doesn't mean a younger woman doesn't have baby rabies, but any woman over the age of 30 who asks you if you like children and doesn't have children of her own, she's got the baby rabies for sure. Number four, she's in her 30s and tells you she doesn't want kids. This is a reverse projection ploy women with baby rabies like to use to throw a target off the scent. Like I said before, Every woman on the face of the planet is born with a strong desire to reproduce and give birth. It is who they are with women. It's not something they could just turn off. It's in their DNA. And if she tells you proactively that she does not want kids and she's in her 30s, again, be on the lookout. Now, she might be telling the truth, but are you going to take that chance? Are you going to stop using condoms because she said she didn't want kids? If someone told you that if a woman in her 30s proactively tells you she doesn't want kids, that it's a 95% certainty she's telling the truth, would you still raw dog abroad and discount the 5% chance she might not be? You want to be saddled with a child for 18 years? Younger women think they don't want to have kids because they're young. They're having so much fun, they think they can't see themselves having children anytime soon. So they say out loud, I don't think I want kids, or I don't want kids right now, which in this day and age is normal female vernacular. But it is biologically inconsistent for a woman in her 30s who is childless to say definitively that she does not want children. Maybe she's telling the truth, maybe she's not, but there is no need to take a risk like that. It's not even close to worth it. Number five, she knows you've got one foot out the door. Women are hyper aware of behavioral patterns in people, and they have a supernatural ability to read people. Person for person, the average female is much better at reading and interpreting nonverbal human behavior than the average man. That's where the term women's intuition comes from. They have this ability because they're the smaller, weaker, slower gender. It's a survival mechanism. Well, females also use their intuition to gauge a man's contentment in a relationship. When a woman asks you, where is this going? She already knows where it's going. She just wants to hear you acknowledge it or come clean with the truth. She already knows whether or not you're happy with her before she asks you. She just asks the question to start a dialogue to either fix whatever issue you have with her or to get verbal reassurance that she is holding it down as your woman and that you're not going anywhere for the time being. By the same token, a woman knows when you are thinking about leaving her. You may not say so and you may not think you're showing signs, but trust me when I tell you, women always know. They're almost never blindsided by the men in their lives. And if your woman knows you're about to bounce on her, she'll catch a case of the baby rabies real quick. Because even though they know that having a man's baby is the worst way to keep him around, women still engage in this nonsense. So if you're thinking about leaving your woman, trust me when I tell you, your woman does too. And at this point, you have two choices. You can stop banging her altogether or just leave. Number six, she asks questions about your genetics and health. Just because a woman has baby rabies doesn't mean she's not going to be selective when choosing a target to trap with a kid. 
Women seek out the best genes just like we do. They want to have the children of men who are big and strong, have masculine qualities, and so forth. Well, obviously, if she's sleeping with you, you measure up physically. But when she starts asking you questions about your medical history, your illnesses, your family history, like, is there heart disease or liver disease in your family? Have you ever broken a bone? They're asking questions like this to make sure you are as healthy on the inside as you appear to be on the outside. She may even ask to see pictures of your mother and father, because girls know that there are a lot of dudes out here on steroids who look strong and physically fit, but they know that steroids don't change a man's genetic code. She'll ask you questions about how you did in school, what kind of grades you got, what you scored on the SAT, and so forth. Why? Because she wants to know whether or not she's going to have a smart kid or a stupid kid. The thing is, if a woman knows you well enough, she knows whether or not you're smart or dumb. She knows whether or not you're healthy. She knows all of these things. But because they want to be 100% sure of what they're getting in an offspring, they give themselves away by asking the kinds of questions that only a woman who wants to have a kid with you will ask. I was really good friends with a guy I met down in LA a few years back, and he's a few years older than I am. But when I met him, he had a two-year-old. I didn't really think anything of it because men have kids at all ages. We're fertile until we kick the bucket. Anyway, I remember him telling me about how his baby mama tricked him into getting her pregnant. And he said that she kept asking him questions about his high school and college transcripts. Then when his mom came to visit, his girlfriend actually asked the mother if the family had any illness in their history. Now, he didn't think it was a big deal until, of course, his mother congratulated him on finding a life partner. And he said he was like, life partner? I'm just dating her. And his mother told him, well, she's got other ideas. And a couple of weeks later, he found out she was pregnant. Now, the girl was really hot, and they did end up having a baby boy. And the last time I talked to him, they were still together and doing pretty good. So that situation appears to have a happy ending, at least for the time being. But what if he didn't want a kid? What would she have done if he dumped her and said, I'll pay child support and take the kid every other week, but you and I are done? Girls never think this stuff through, especially when they have the baby rabies, which renders a female's rationale and foresight useless when getting pregnant is the only thing on their minds. There is positively zero reason a woman would ask you about your genetics, your family history, or your SAT scores unless she wants to have your kid. She ain't asking you this stuff to make conversation, I can guarantee you that. So while knowing the signs a woman is trying to have a kid without your consent or knowledge is beneficial, it is more important to know how she's going to try and do it. So on the evening of Thanksgiving at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, I will discuss these things on TSR Primetime live from Las Vegas. Thanks for watching.